Okay, you are being recorded. Um, this is for Chapter 4. We're talking about the decision structures and Boolean logic. Uh, we just did some pseudocode uh, to think about how we approach uh, Exercise 5, Caller Mixer. Uh, and that says the program should prompt her to enter a color or two colors. And if the user enters anything other than red or yellow, the program should display an error message. We're going to do this a couple different ways uh, based on the code that we just did. Important things to remember are that you need to use the keyword raw input when you're expecting text from the user. And it's important to remember that the computer stores text within double quotes. So if you want to compare what they entered to something, let's see, not equal to operator, we had to put double quotes. Also, with the um, if statements with Python, it's very important that you indent using the tab key. Everything that's indent under an if is only going to happen if the condition was true. And then if you use an else, which I'll introduce in a, in a minute, that would happen if the condition were false. And so if the color entered is not equal to red, we know for sure the only time this line of code would execute is if this condition were, is, is true, right? If the color entered is not equal to red, we safely know that the color was not red, right? We can say that safely here. We want to then check if it's also not equal to blue. So we're saying if the color entered is not equal to blue, we can do we know it wasn't blue. And here's where the indentation is. We, want it, we have to indent this line to say the color entry was not yellow. Let's try this. Every time I make one little change, I like to test it. I'm going to do Control S and then F. I'm getting just feedback from this print color enter to make sure that I got it correctly. And notice I did not do any of these lines of code because I came in, the first thing I checked was the color entered was not equal to red. It was false. And the color entered was equal to red. So this was false. So the next line of code that would execute would be anything that was at this same level of indentation down here. But there is nothing. So it did, the program just ended. Why did it set the color, the, the input red? There is no command saying print red. What's that? This time I jump down to this print line because this condition, color equal to red, was false. So since it was at the same level of indentation, I came down and the line of a code that was executed was this one. Let's try it with some other color. What happened? We ran this line of code. Just echoed it back out. I printed it, they put again. It came in to check to see if the color was not equal to red. That was true. The color entered was not equal to red. So I came into this air of code and I printed that the color entered was not red. The next thing that happened still indented, so it only happened because this was false, or because, because it was true. The color entered was equal to red. So color, uh, check to see if the color entered was not equal to. The color entered not equal to blue was not true. This was false. So I don't go into anything that's indented under it. I jump back out this. If there was anything that was indented at the level, I would have done it. There wasn't, so I came back out to this level.
I'll, I'll wait and add that line in here. Let's try it with yellow and I'll try it with the color that's none of these. Yeah, this print color entered here is why it printed the word blue. I was just putting that there for testing originally. I could take it out now if I wanted to. So color entered not red, that was true. Color entered was not blue, that was true. Color entered not equal to yellow was false. So it went to the end of the program. So if we did it this way, we know that they could do an error message at this point, color entered was not red, not blue, and not yellow. That's when it should display an error. Again, I'm putting some stuff you really wouldn't have in your final program just for testing and making things what's going on, but I'm indenting this to the same level, so this is only going to happen if this evaluates to true. And the only way that this would evaluate, it would get to this line of code is if this was true and was true, so we know that they didn't enter a very color if they got all the way down here. We could add an else here if we wanted to. We, that would be the only code that would happen if the if line the line with it was false. I recommended to help you understand what's going on to put a comment right on the else line, say why it would ever go into the else. And what does it mean that you got to the else? An error message, you're going to see that, right? It's important to know what the messages mean and don't get frustrated. Just try to read them and understand them. Look in your book, look in the language companion. Actually, the language companion is what's going to help you. Also, note you have a help up here, too. There's some good information both in Raptor and in Python in this help menu. Let's take a look at that message and see if we can figure out what it means. Invalid syntax is all it says. We know the computer is ignoring everything at a pound sign because it's just a comment, right? That's ignored. So it's got to be an error around here. And just like our if lines that end in a colon, our else lines need in a colon. This is just one of the rules of the language, what syntax is, a rule of language. It's not the exact same every language, but they all have their own rules. And in Python, it wants a colon after ifs and ifs. I didn't come into here because I would only come in here if this were true. Since this was false, I came to the else and I printed this.
All right, so that's how we could do it with a nested structure. It's just important to remember that the ifs and else's have to line up. And every all the code within it has to be indented one time using the tab key. And we had found when we did our pseudocode and thought about this problem that we can do it with uh, logical operators. Do you think to remember with logical operators, you need an entire complete evaluation, an entire expression that can evaluate true or false on both sides of the operator? This entire thing could be true or false. This entire thing could be true or false. You can't just say and not equal to yellow. Just say a complete expression here. We realized when we did our pseudocode and thinking about it earlier that we needed the and and not before, because we built a truth table. Uh, we needed to know if every single one of those was true, if they're all not equal to the words that are valid, that was the only way we would know that the input was not valid. Otherwise, you'd get one thing that was true, or you get one that was false, and two that were true, and if you used four, it would always, uh, it would, you wouldn't really know what you got because one thing would always be true, it would never be equal to those. And so I'm gonna uh, leave you there, another appointment at one here, but I'll be back on at like two or two or two thirty, so uh, take an hour or so to work on these if you're not done with the chapter four exercises yet. And then email me what you've got or, um, or or send me an email and ask. I can meet you back into the in the virtual classroom, virtual office, and we'll go over your stuff together. Right, but I'm going to stop recording. I'll stick around for a couple seconds for a question, but uh, I, I do need to run a minute, um, and I can rejoin you later.